<laughs> Hello, welcome back to the channel of Two World Nonsense. I'm out on my Yamaha MG10 SP, but I'm currently riding it back to Yamaha UK because I'm trying a different Yamaha. Yeah, so this is going to be my first ride review of the Yamaha Tenere 700. It's going to be my very first impressions. It's not really a review. I'm just going to get it, get the keys and uh, see what it's like because I've never ridden a Tenere 700. So yes, it's going to be the 2023 updated model. Although, yes, I know it's 2024. I haven't got my Julians and my Gregorians mixed up. But yeah, I'll see you in a second when I swap some cross plane four for some cross plane two. Delicious. There we have it, 10,100 pounds of Yamaha Tenere 700. It's not one of the fancy editions. This is the entry level, most basic Tenere. I just want to try it out, see what it feels like, maybe do some green laning with it in the next couple of weeks. This is very much my first impressions. My first impressions are good because it's got a USB socket down there. Don't know if you can see that, so I can fit my sat nav. Nice vertical screen. Quite a tall seat, but I'm quite a tall bloke, so I'm all right. So yeah, let's get out of Woking. Yeah. So yeah, I've just left behind my MT-10. Oh, I've got steering lock, that's nice. Ooh, I feel very in it. I feel very much like it's one of those bikes that you get on and you don't feel like you're perched on top of it like a rat sitting on top of a pie. You feel like a macaron pushed deep inside a blancmange. Very nice, I like the vertical dash as well, that's very clear. It says Eco at the bottom, why does it say Eco? I don't want Eco. So here we go, yeah, 70 horsepower, some torque, the cross plane 2 motor, which actually, <laughs> I really like. This already feels uh, very soft, which is good. Nice long travel suspension, I think it's 210, 220 mil of suspension travel. Now this 2023 model, one of the updates that this got was gets wiring for a quick shifter, which it never had before. And I can tell you now, this one doesn't actually have the quick shifter fitted, so I'll be doing it Manuel style. It's got brand new tyres on it, I think it comes on pretty Scorpion rallies! So uh, mildly knobbly. But anyway, this bit's boring. Let's uh, get some heat into it and take it home. The muddy way. It's got some pep! <laughs> yeah, it's got some good low down shove, this cross plane 2 engine, I forgot about that. It gets a little bit breathless at the top, but you know, so you've got 70 horsepower. What did you expect? An R1? Oh no, that's dead now. Yeah, I've just done about five, 10 miles since I switched the cameras off. And I've noticed a few things about this already. Now, obviously it's got 21 inch front wheel for maximum off-roading, um, but it does give you quite an unnerving feeling when you start to put any reasonable amount of lean on it, suddenly tips in after it, you'll be okay, okay, then it'll feel like it's falling over and you'll put your foot out if you're doing a mini roundabout, as I've found out. But yeah, the screen's a bit buffety for me. I'm six foot three. Screens are always buffety for me, to be honest. But yeah, I'm really enjoying the, the engine though. Like when you're around town and you're on a closed throttle with some engine braking, you'll occasionally get a little pop, 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 pop. Like it's got a big hollow Dakar airbox underneath you. It sounds really cool, quite like it. That little eco, uh, eco sign at the bottom of the dash, that's just when you're on a steady throttle or a closed throttle. I guess it's doing something with the engine management to reduce fuel consumption. But yeah, so far, I mean, I wouldn't have come down here in my MT-10. I've done flooded roads and all sorts. And I'm about to go back to where I live in Dorking, over the hills and down some twisty, natural roads. I just wouldn't do this time of year on the super naked. So yeah, let's give the Tenere a little bit of uh, something it's more accustomed to. But it's comfortable, I'm enjoying it. There is a slight bit of the frame sticking out where my right shin wants to be, but I can just put my foot on the peg in a slightly different place. And it's got big grippy off-road foot pegs as well with rubber inserts that you can remove. So yeah, so far, I really quite like this. 10,000 pounds is an affordable bike these days, though I would say, the uh, MT-09, you can get one for about the same price. Well, it's a completely different cut of the badges. One uh, other niggle, which I need to remember, is uh, it's got the Yamaha scroll wheel down here on the right switch gear cluster. Same as my MT-10, 
and it's just on the wrong side. I don't know how anyone at Yamaha ever signed it off. You scroll up and down and click it in and stuff. But trying to do it while holding the throttle <laughs> constant is a bit like trying to complete Minesweeper while wanking. It's really hard to do two things at the same time there. So yeah, that should go over there. But they fixed that on the new MT-09, I think. They've put a new control over here. So I presume Yamaha will see their wisdom and then roll it out over the other bikes. But hey, that's not the most useless thing that's in front of me right now. The most useless thing is, is a Lotus dealer trying to sell electric Lotus SUVs. I don't think anyone's buying them. Look at Lotus Electro, black one, green one, grey one, yellow one. Give me a V6 Exige, man. But anyway, I'm going to get some uh, slightly twistier, muddier roads and yeah, report back. A lovely day to be out on a motorbike. Blue sky. What's not to like, frankly? What's not to bloody like? Ooh, AMG GT4 door. Someone's car's depreciated £60,000. I have to say, so far on the road, this has put me in a really relaxed state of mind. Just cruising. Kind of rolls quite nicely from side to side. Apart from the bit where it feels like it's going to fall off the edge of the world when you go past a certain lean angle. But yeah, the engine's like so tractable. You just stick it in fifth at 40 miles an hour. And it still will gently roll your foreskin back as you get on the throttle. How lovely. Now this road will probably get a bit wet and muddy up here, but that's what the Tenere is all about, isn't it? It's not about being a garage queen. It's about getting held up behind the Tesla Model S. Oh, I thought they'd be going to the private school down there. Oh, hello, another Tesla. BMW M3. Ooh. Just saying car names now. It's a good green lane that goes across there. I'm not going to do it today. It's going to be wet and claggy and there's a big steep chalk hill down the other side, which ain't going to be much fun. Now the front brakes on this, at speed they feel a little bit soft, but they're not, they're not weak. If you grab them hard enough, they do the job. I think it's more just their bit designed for off-road use like everything about this bike i'm getting the sense this is a machine with a purpose in mind and that machine that purpose is not necessarily tarmacking it's mudding and going through big muddy puddles i'm not going to do that yeah this reminds me of the uh, Priya Touareg 660 in terms of it putting me in the space of mind where I just want to go off and explore and go down roads that I never normally go down without feeling like I'm going to die. Without the quick shift on this, you do need to remember to blip your downshifts because it's got quite a lot of engine braking actually. And I can see you locking a back wheel on the wet in this if you're braking hard enough and just dumping it down into second and banging the clutch out. That's good. I like that. Old school motor riding it feels like a very simple bike no riding modes to bother you or dick about with no worrying that you're not in the optimum riding mode for the current conditions you just you know recall your motorbike skills or lack of in my case and suspension isn't so wallowy that you don't know what it's doing underneath you it's actually got a firm edge to it could possibly be slight cheapness but uh yeah would definitely not do this on my super naked <laughs> Well, is that SL55? No, I think it's just normal SL, isn't it? Oh my goodness, look at this. How deep's that, do we reckon? It's okay. Do you think it's all right? Yeah, have, you been, bicycle, so. have you been through yeah, it? Yeah. Oh, fine, let's go for it. I believe I'm having faith in you. Oh yeah, my feet are wet. <laughs> Brilliant. Definitely wouldn't have done that on my MT10. <laughs> my feet. I've got goldfish in them now. <laughs> Turn away life! <laughs> yeah, that's fine. We've done it on bicycles. That man looks suspiciously dry. I think I've just been done over. <laughs> yeah, he'll enjoy that in the Defender. Right, I suppose I should show you what this bike looks like, shouldn't I? Let's go have a quick squiz. muddy car park actually this feels i mean i'm sitting down just wobbling around a leafy car park but it feels pretty proper i like it oh side stands a bit too long to get it down on a slope there is that gonna fall over yeah quite high seat i'm absolutely <laughs> whoop, whoop, whoop. i'm drenched yeah look at that it just looks really cool i know you can get this in blue as well this is like the tech camo scheme or something but yeah scorpion rally str tires twin discs little brembo calipers there i'll do a full spec rundown when i do the review of this 
but I quite like it. It's kind of a simple, honest looking machine, isn't it? A bit like me. Right, unfortunately, I've got to another lap of the muddy car park. Wee, adventuring. Right, there's a little path to get out of here. This is handy. I, I didn't intend to do any uh, off-roading at all, but do I want to go down there? Let's have at you. Ooh, this is steep than it looks on YouTube, just FYI. Right, we're out. Right, which way? Should we go back through the flood? Right, let's get my feet wet again. I might go through this in second gear this time. That's the green lane up there. It's, I think it's going to be too chalky and slippery to do today. But I'm meant to be just getting home and picking my children up from school. Right, Mike, should I go a bit slower this time? Yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting less wet going through it 10 miles now compared to whatever I did earlier. Oh, that's absolutely fine. What an anticlimax. <laughs> I like it. It's not got so much power that you're scared you're going to get the beams anywhere. It's a friendly off-road giant, I guess. Really nice. I really like it. That's my first impressions. Anyway, I'm going to stop waffling on, let you have some of your uh, precious YouTube hours back. Thank you for watching this. My full review of the Tenere 700 will be out when I've uh, ridden it a bit more, when I've filmed it and I've uh, done some more stuff on it and taken it properly green laning. But yeah, thank you for watching this, and see you next time. I didn't expect to ride through a flood and also be on my MT-10 in the same video, so that's good, isn't it? Bye, like, comment, subscribe, and go down to the comments and leave me the Japanese word for salmon feet, because that's what I've got now. <laughs>